Good morning, everyone. I'm Quinn Wisson from Vertical Measures, and I'm here hosting VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled, How to Create a Content Marketing Plan That Works, and will be presented by our very own president of Vertical Measures, Arnie Ken. Arnie has held executive positions in the world of new technologies and marketing for more than 20 years. He is a frequent speaker and author of content marketing book, Accelerate, Moving Your Business Forward Through the Convergence of Search, Social, and Content Marketing. We're very excited to have Arnie lead this presentation. Before we get started and I hand over the presentation, please allow me to take care of just a few quick notes. Today's webinar will be available for replay by tomorrow afternoon, barring any technical difficulties. We'll also be happy to answer any of your questions, so please make sure to ask them in the chat applet located on your screen or the question applet. Also, we will be tweeting, so go ahead and tweet to us using the hashtag VMWebinar with any questions you may have. If we don't get to your question today, we'll be sure to try to answer anything via email or on our website. If you're having any technical difficulties, please attempt to reconnect. So with that housekeeping complete, I will go ahead and hand it off to our very own President of Vertical Measures, Arnie Ken. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Thanks, Quinn, for the introduction. And hopefully everybody can hear me uh, loud and clear. And I'll keep an eye on the chat applet as well in case uh, there are any uh, technical difficulties that people are pointing out. Uh, but we're going to hold to the end for the questions. I, if I do this uh, the way I think it's going to take, it'll be about 30 to 35 minutes, and uh, uh, we'll uh, take questions at that time. All righty. So uh, Quinn already told you who I am, so I'm going to zip right through this slide. But I've been uh, doing this uh, before Google has existed. So I've got quite a bit of experience in, in Internet and online marketing. Um, and about... I'd say now it's a little bit over two years ago, I started to write the book Accelerate that Quinn mentioned. Uh, it's pretty much a uh, content marketing how-to book, at least that's the approach that I, I decided to take with the book. And it came out about a year ago. Uh, sales are you know, pretty good, but something interesting happened along the way. Uh, there's a couple of algorithm updates from Google, one of them called Panda, and then another one followed uh, early this year called Penguin. And I noticed things were happening. Things were happening at our uh, company as an agency. We were getting uh, lots of calls about people needing help. I noticed uh, sales of the book were increasing. Um, I'm quite involved in content marketing, as you might imagine. So I decided, oh, by the way, I'll tell you how to get uh, Accelerate for free uh, at the end of the presentation. But I decided to do some research online using the tools available to us. And I went to Google Trends to see what was happening with the phrase content marketing. And if you can all see the screen clear enough, you can see that uh, there's a, a very solid increase in the amount of searches for the phrase content marketing. In fact, it really started to take off uh, near the end of 2011 and right now, of course, all through 2012. And I believe that's uh, thanks to our friends at Google uh, with their Panda and Penguin updates, which really started to slam spammy, weak, uh, basic content. Uh, and really started to promote solid, engaging, informative content, uh, and also got rid of a lot of other spammy link building uh, techniques and so on and so forth uh, along the way. It was a good thing for us. But I also started to see another trend. You know, a lot of SEOs suddenly feeling and, and explaining that they're content marketing experts. And uh, uh, so I decided to kind of cover that a little bit. Uh, in my view, what content marketing is not it is not just throwing out a random press release. You know, if you do have some really good news and you need to push it out, you know, press releases are, are great, they're powerful, they show up in search results, but you know, just sending something out for the sake of putting out a press release maybe for links is not really the, the way to go about it. It's also not just periodically pushing out a random infographic. It's also not just throwing out blog posts when you come up with some idea. And it's not the latest pretty cute picture of a cat. Um, what's really happening is buyers need content that makes them smarter and more knowledgeable about their purchases. And businesses that provide that content, they're, they're going to win. They're going to win in the short term. They're going to win in the long run. So what content marketing is, in my view anyway, is a continuous planned out process 
And, and here at Vertical Measures, we've kind of created this eight-step process that we try to go through with all of our clients. Uh, and it's a continuous process, in case I forget to mention that uh, sometime in a future slide. Um, it isn't finished when you finally get all the way to, to measuring results. In fact, you're constantly, in my view, adapting and adjusting your strategy based on things that are happening to you and, and your content throughout this entire process. But the core, I think, and one of the, one of the keys is that you all need to think like a publisher. I'm not from the South. I don't know why I said you all, but you need to think like a publisher. If you've got a website, and I'm assuming everybody on this call today has a website or is responsible for one, um, you're putting out content, and hopefully you're putting out fresh content. And, and the, the thing I, I'm going I'm to emphasize in the next 30 minutes is, is uh, of course, developing the plan, but thinking like a publisher. If you think about newspaper publishers, magazine publishers, even radio and television to some degree, you know, for, for the, the history of, of, of their business, they've had put, put together a plan. They don't just you know, think uh, we're going to throw out a magazine in, in November. Uh, they have a long, generally an annual plan. I'm going to talk more about uh, an editorial calendar uh, in just a few minutes. So uh, developing your strategy. Uh, we do actually do a full one-day workshop on content marketing and, and the strategy piece we cover. Uh, I think it takes about an hour. It's an hour segment. I'm going to cover it now in about 90 seconds. Uh, but what I try to do is boil it down to several of the most important questions you should be asking yourself as you're putting together your plan, putting together your strategy. And like I mentioned earlier, your strategy, it's going to evolve through the whole process. So don't, don't think it just needs to, to, uh, to be a permanent plan once it's created. But think about questions like, why are you creating the content you're creating? You know, what's your end goal? Who is your audience? And make sure that you're creating content that's going to mean something and reach that audience. And also, you know, who are you? What, what kind of voice do you want to have? Uh, you know, if you're in a, uh, an industry where you can be humorous and that's kind of your business's style, then be humorous in, in the content you're creating. If you're maybe a law firm and you need to be very careful about what you say, then be very careful about the kind of content you're creating as well, as it's really, you know, branding you and representing you. Think about the types of content you're going to create. I'm going to go through a few examples of content that I would encourage you to create, but there's all kinds of things. You know, there's infographics, video, podcasts, and of course, all sorts of written content, uh, but you can't do it all. I mean, unless you're a very large corporation on, on this webinar, most people just don't have the resources to do it all. So you've got to really you know, choose your bullets carefully and, and decide what it is you're capable of creating or, or what you might want to outsource and then manage from there. And how are you going to develop it? Again, you know, maybe you're going to outsource it. Maybe you're going to do it internally. Maybe you have friends and family. Who, who knows how the content's going to get developed? But you do need to think about and know ahead of time uh, how that's going to happen. Uh, and of course, a content calendar. You know, when are you going to uh, uh, develop it and, and publish this content? And then what does success look like? You know, I, I hear a lot of people talking about content marketing being uh, inexpensive or, or close to free as compared to advertising. And I suppose when it comes to writing checks and, and spending cash, that's true. But uh, content marketing is not easy. Uh, it is a time investment. And so if you're going to spend a lot of time, if you're going to convince your bosses and, and, and uh, move forward with this, you do need to understand or at least look at you know, what, what is the return on investment and, and what will you deem as a success in the end. And it, it might be as simple as we're going to open up a new market in a new city, and so uh, we're going to do all localized content for that market. It might be we need to grow sales by 20% this year. Uh, so again, think about what success looks like. And the last bullet there, you know, try to picture what's different about uh, as a result of this content marketing campaign. So uh, the next step is research. And this is where we spend quite a bit of time with clients. Um, once they've bought into the idea of doing content marketing, we've put together a plan. And, and even those that don't have a plan that, 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 we, that we talk to quite often, uh, they get stuck with, okay, but now what do we write about? Or what do we produce a video about? So on and so forth. So uh, there's several different uh, ways you can go about researching this. Um, I think the one that gets missed the most and is probably the most effective and the most important is talking to your own staff. And I don't know who's all on the call today, what size organizations you're, you're with and different expertise levels and so on and so forth. But if you've got somebody in the warehouse, talk to them. It uh, could be somebody in your, your shipping department. It uh, could be in accounting. 
um, certainly the salespeople or, 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 or um, help desk people, people on the front lines talking to customers, it could be your receptionist. Uh, what I recommend is don't send an email saying, you know, well, what should we write content about? I recommend getting them together, having a little bit of a brainstorming session, and just ask them what questions do they get asked on a regular basis. I guarantee they'll all come up with, with those, that list of questions for you. In fact, if you could spend an hour or two hours interviewing several members of your staff, you might just find you, you'll come up with a hundred questions. I mean, you could come up with hundreds of questions that are frequently asked by people interacting with your organization. And, and, the, and what I recommend then is, of course, create content that's answering those questions, or at least certainly using those questions as, as a method to spur on ideas for content. But I really believe trying to answer your customers' questions online is great. Just think about it. If they're talking to your receptionist or your sales department and asking questions, they're probably searching for those exact same questions online. And they may have done it before they ever, ever even called you. So once you have that, you might also then kind of take this list and go to what I call, uh, what they call answer sites, like uh, Yahoo Answers, Quora, LinkedIn, Answers.com. Uh, they're great places to go, enter in your keyword phrases, and see what questions pop up that people are asking online. Uh, and just for an example, I, I hike a lot, and so I did a sample uh, with Yahoo Answers, and I went in and I typed, uh, entered um, hiking boots, and over 1,600 results came back. So there were over 1,600 questions being asked with the phrase hiking boots in it. Uh, it was kind of eye-opening. I mean, people were asking about men's waterproof hiking boots and, and all kinds of things, a great idea generator. Uh, another one that gets a little bit deeper, and I hope I can explain this in a slide, but uh, if you go to Google and you type in a search, in fact, here's a search for waterproof hiking boots, and it'll bring down the results. And on the left-hand side, I know actually they were just messing with this the other day where I think they moved it to the right, but either way, most of the time right now it's on the left-hand side. You see the drop-down where it describes, so uh, you could click on uh, news and blogs, I forget what it is, and, but the bottom one is called, uh, is a link or more, and if you click on that link, it's going to bring up another set of, of, of uh, words you can click on, and if you click on discussions, it's going to bring up a view that looks much like this, where uh, Google's going to return places where people are discussing, in this example, waterproof hiking boots. Um, and you'll see some, I think, surprising results here. I don't know how well all of you can see the screen, but the, the very first one is from askville.amazon.com. The second one is answers.walmart.com. Uh, there's one a little bit further down below, muskie.outdoorfirst.com. And these are, are uh, forums or question and answer sections on these sites where you'll see what people are asking and wondering about your products and services. And again, it's a great content idea generator. Another one that gets a little more technical, it, it's, I suppose, one of my top three or four favorites, is to use Open Site Explorer from SEO Moz. Uh, and it's opensiteexplorer.org. Uh, so you go to that site, and, you're, and basically what I recommend is you enter in your competitor, competitor's URL, and it will bring back a view that looks something like this, where uh, you can click on the tab that's called Top Pages, and it in essence sorts your competitor's web pages in order of most inbound links. So it's going to show you the pages that have the most links from other websites pointing to it. And to me, if people are linking to those pages, there's a reason for it. And it generally means that they're willing to send their customers and they like those pages. So look and see what kind of content your competitors are putting out that others are willing to link to and then create, hopefully, better content. And then if you want to complete the whole cycle, come back and find those same sites and ask if they'll link to your content. But again, it's a great way to see what's working in your marketplace, certainly for your competitors. And then the last one is just pretty much the classic uh, Google AdWords keyword research. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but it's a pretty good tool to be able to see the, the volume of searches on a global basis and on a USA basis uh, for, for your keyword phrases. I don't, wouldn't say it's 100% accurate. I don't think Google says it's totally accurate, but it'll certainly give you a perspective on the competition and the, the volume of searches for different keyword phrases, and that might help you prioritize what content you, you'd like to create. So once you've done all this, 
And this can be done in just a few days. We did this at, at Vertical Measures, getting ready for about a six-month uh, content calendar here. And we came up with just under 500 content ideas in, I think it was less than 72 hours, by following very much the same uh, 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 advice I just gave. So we recommend then you list uh, possible titles, what kind of content you think you might create uh, with that particular title, and the keyword phrase that you're going to emphasize uh, with that piece of content. Um, and so you get this list, and then as you start to roll out a content calendar, which I strongly, strongly recommend, if you're really uh, going to get into content marketing and you want to do this in a pretty big way, I don't see any way to go about this without having some type, type of a calendar in place. And what I recommend, just like I was talking about you know, publishers before, newspapers, magazines, they do this routinely. And I recommend you take an annual look. So maybe right now you start planning for 2013. So of course you'd lay out January through December and start thinking about stuff that affects your business. And again, I don't know all the different kinds of businesses on the call right now, but maybe there are certain events uh, uh, that you attend uh, every, every year. You know, maybe it's in June and um, uh, September. You always go to a certain event. Or maybe if you're in the uh, travel industry, maybe events come to you near your town. So you might want to mark those in a calendar. Um, uh, maybe there's uh, certain holidays that really affect your business. Uh, and so on and so forth. So you start thinking about things that happen on a fairly routine basis. Get this into the count into an annual look. So then you can start to plan uh, your uh, level of detail on a monthly basis. And that's what I'd recommend. And we generally try to work 90 days out, uh, both at, at Vertical Measures and with our clients, where uh, you know again we have got the annual view and we can start thinking about those kinds of things. But as the months start approaching, and, and generally we're trying to to detail 90 days in advance. We're laying out what day we're going to publish an infographic, what day we're going to publish certain blog posts, you know, what are the titles, who's responsible, uh, again, what formats are going to be. Um, and you lay out this detail, and you know, of course you'll have to back off and, and find out, well, if I'm doing an infographic, I'm going to need three weeks to turn that around, so I want to publish it on uh, May 2nd, so I need to uh, have you know, a final proof uh, you know, two weeks earlier, or whatever it is. But you, you get, my, get the concept. So of course now you need to create some content. Uh, you've done a, a reasonable amount of, uh, of research. You've got a bunch of ideas. You think they all fit. And what I'm going to talk about now, though, there's there's lots of different kinds of content. But the next five slides, I'm going to talk about content. I think a lot of you miss or avoid producing that can be uh, really valuable for a lot of businesses if you if you'll tackle it. Uh, and one, this comes from a good friend of mine, Marcus Sheridan, runs a, a pool company in the East Coast. Uh, just actually saw him at Content Marketing World uh, last week, um, and he talks about addressing pricing. And, and I think it's really, really true. A lot of us avoid, you know, discussing our costs and, and pricing uh, online, but a lot of our potential customers are searching for it. And, and the example he always uses is people. He, he's in the fiberglass pool business, and he noticed, of course, that people are calling and, and online asking, "How much does a fiberglass pool cost?" And so he started, and, and his company started to write and create a lot of content around that. And now he dominates. If you uh, uh, ask a question, pretty much relating to pricing and cost of a fiberglass pool, uh, he's going. In fact, he's ranked number one, in, or ranked number one and number two in this example. Um, and he's not necessarily giving the price of a pool because he can't. Those are all custom items. But he he's written articles with the proper titles and gone through enough uh, in-depth in the articles so people feel like he's at least addressed the issue. And, and that's what I'm recommending is, is think about ways you can address, uh, you know, if you're an e-commerce site, you know, if you're, if you're uh, 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 Amazon, of course, you've got to publish the prices right there. But if you're in a services business or, or maybe a very custom business like, like fiberglass pools or, or uh, B2B or whatever it is, you can, uh, obviously you're not going to be able to just give somebody a price sheet. Uh, but you need to address it and get them to your website. That's, that's the key here. The next thing is comparisons. It's very similar to pricing, um, but a lot of times people are, will do a search. You know, if, you're, if you've ever bought a, a TV online, I, I just did, you know, I'll do searches for, uh, well, years ago I did searches for DLP versus uh, plasma um, or uh, brand versus brand or whatever. So if you're in that situation with the kind of product or services that you might offer where you can put up comparison charts, do that. Uh, again, the, the goal is to get the visitor to the site. You might not provide a complete answer, 
um, but at least you've addressed it and, and, and provided a method for them to get some of this information. Another thing I think people avoid, uh, because I think they think they're complicated, uh, we actually try to do this a lot with our clients and uh, uh, recommend it as often as possible. And we do have quite a few clients that have really embraced the idea of free guides or white papers. Um, they, uh, they seem a little bit difficult to produce, but it's not really that hard to create a 10 or 15, maybe even a 20-page guide. In fact, sometimes you can go back to your older blog posts and pull blog posts together and create a free guide. Or the other way around, you might create a free guide, uh, or I'm sorry, you might know that the end result is going to be a free guide and now write a series of 10 blog posts. And at the end, you put them all together. Of course, you'll you know, have to clean it up a little bit, but turn it into a free uh, PDF that people can download. There's a couple reasons I really like it. Uh, people tend to link, other websites link to free guides and free white papers as a, as a great uh, resource. The other thing is, is if you want, you can put up a uh, a gateway where people need to put their first and last name and email address uh, in to get the free guide. So now you're basically collecting leads. Uh, so I think it's a, it's you know it's, it just right there kills about three birds uh, with one stone. So I highly encourage you uh, considering creating free guides or white papers of some sort for your business. And then interviews. Um, I've seen a lot of text interviews uh, in our industry. I haven't seen them so much in other industries. But it's, uh, again, something else I, I really strongly recommend. Um, reach out. I, I did this slide actually for, um, I think it was a hotel conference. And I was trying to show them how they could uh, write about local uh, issues, <laughs> local things, uh, local content. Because that's, you know, generally if you're going to a hotel, it's a destination-oriented purchase. And maybe you're going to this hotel in, uh, I don't even know where this is, Texas, let's say, uh, because you're going to go fishing. So you might be searching for 10 best fishing spots in Texas. Well, from a content perspective, maybe you could interview a local uh, person who's, you know, they don't have to be a national uh, a star fishing, uh, uh, you know, uh, angler of the year like this person, but they could just be somebody local who knows the, the 10 best lakes or could at least talk to it and interview them and publish it on your site. And, and you know, I'm kind of beating up the fishing here, but all of you through the, the whole Q&A process I described a few minutes ago, can come up with things that people are asking about, and if it makes sense to answer them with an interview process, do it. Uh, it helps. It really helps uh, make you look like an expert in that category as well. And then videos, now, the last of the, of the five different kinds of content I'm going to talk about. Um, they're not as hard as you all might think. Hopefully, you're you're dabbling in it and, and trying video. But I'll, I'll give you a couple of example or a few examples here. Uh, one on the top left where it says interviews. You know, I just Previous slide, I talked about text-based interviews with some images. This could be a video interview. And, and this particular example is Jay Bear, who, who wrote a book, uh, no, I guess about 18 months ago. Uh, we actually did a joint webinar together just like this. Uh, when my book came out, he reached out to me and asked if uh, he could interview me for his website. So we set up, uh, I think that was a Skype interview at the time. Um, and we had maybe a total of one man hour. I mean, I only had about 20 minutes invested in it. He had to actually edit the video and post it on his site, so he had maybe a man hour, maybe one and a half hours. So for maybe a total of two man hours, he ended up with a nice 20-minute video, uh, transcribed, a lot of content on his page. Uh, if you can see, this is I took the screenshot a long time ago, but when I took the screenshot, it had been retweeted 278 times, shared on LinkedIn over 100 times. So it was great for both of us, great content, great exposure. On the top right is uh, we do some link building for clients, and uh, every month we give an award out for the person who got the best link for a client. And this particular month there was a tie, so the two guys uh, who tied uh, challenged each other to a foot race in the parking lot. So we ran out, and you know, three or four of us uh, videoed the foot race, made a nice little two-minute video, and it said a lot about vertical measures. and. Uh, uh, and we posted it. It has you know, a few hundred views. It's not a huge, huge thing, but it's content for us. Um, and then behind the scenes, I, I saw this uh, in preparation for another seminar, uh, which I thought was really cool. A TV station um, literally set up, uh, what is that, five different Google Hangout cameras and showed an entire broadcast what happens behind the scenes. It was really cool, and it had quite a few views. And a lot of us can do behind the scenes. Uh, you know, if you, if you run a uh, restaurant, you can do behind the scenes in the kitchen and, and so on and so forth. 
then of course there's user generated content depending on the market you're in and you can always ask people to submit videos and, and then post them so I, I do I think with Google Hangouts in particular one of my new favorites you can really produce video fairly uh, easily now uh, remotely so the bottom line uh, if someone is pricing it you need to be addressing the pricing if someone's comparing it you need to be comparing it if someone's asking about it you need to be answering it if someone's thinking about it you need to mention it and if someone has concerns you should tackle those concerns head-on with the content you're creating all right, so you've got this content, you've done all the research, you, you, you've uh, uh, prioritized, you've put together your calendar, and the months are going by, and you're, you're producing this content. But one of the keys, of course, is telling and letting people know that the content exists. And this is one of the more difficult parts, I'd say. Uh, it's maybe equally difficult to everything I just led you up to. Um, uh, you know, sometimes content takes off all by itself. Sometimes the title alone, if people are searching for it, and you've you, you are one of the few who produced it, maybe addressing pricing like I talked about. Uh, you're going to get discovered in search, and it'll work all by itself. But if you're in a fairly competitive industry, um, you're going to have to promote it a little bit. So you do need to understand where your customer is uh, online and probably offline, but right now we're talking about online. So are they on Google+, Plus? are they on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, and so on? Um, as hard as it is, it is effective if you've got an out, just you know, a single outstanding piece of content you created. Maybe it's a free guide like I recommended, or or a great interview series, or whatever it is. Contact uh, PR, uh, you know, send out uh, PR and blogger pitches just the way you would in traditional uh, press. Uh, you know, contact them, let them know what's in it for them, why it is that readers would be interested in it, so on and so forth. And of course, you know, building the relationships and partnerships over time as you do this is just going to help when you finally do hit awesome piece of content that you just really need to let the world know about. Um, and then, of course, the mentions and shares uh, appear to be signals in the search engines, and especially Google Plus for Google. Uh, so you do want to get people liking and, and voting up, or you know, whatever the site might be, whatever they call it, you know, one plus thing, so on and so forth. Um, uh, it helps in the searches. It helps when they arrive in the search engines, and they may see people they know who have actually liked this content. And then distribution, which is pretty similar to promotion, um, but but it is subtle, you know has its subtle differences. And, and what I mean here is, if you have created the you know the videos, of course, posted on YouTube and, and and maybe a couple of other video sharing platforms. If you have images within your blog post or your product images, uh, put them on Pinterest and make and they will, but make sure they link back to your your originating site. Pinterest has uh, certainly become an awesome traffic driver for the travel industry, for many, many e-commerce sites, uh, uh, restaurants and cooking. Um, it, it, there's places where people have just seen their traffic explode by, by posting their, their images and their content, well, images that link to their content uh, on Pinterest. Flickr is another image sharing site that works very, very well. Uh, Instagram, of course. Uh, and then turn around and use a lot of your content in your email campaigns. If you don't already, uh, if you don't send out newsletters every month or however, whatever your frequency might be uh, because you're not sure what to put in them, how about just grabbing snippets from several of your blog, blog posts that you did over the last you know, 30 days or 90 days or whatever, you know, whatever uh, period you're going to send out newsletters and create a simple newsletter and send it out. It will bring people back to your website. And some of this, uh, as I mentioned in the last bullet, you can actually fairly well automate so that your stuff appears maybe in LinkedIn automatically or you're automatically tweeting stuff out. So um, I'm getting towards the 30 minute mark here. So one message I want to say that I just love and I think I, I don't remember who I heard this from first. Uh, it might have been Robert Rose but it's pretty simple and it's, it's, it's I think pretty true. You know, Advertising is just renting the space. If, if all of you are spending any money on pay-per-click or maybe yellow pages or newspaper ads or radio, you know that when you stop the spending the ads go away. But content marketing, it's like it's like owning the house. Um, there's content that are generating re, that is generating real business, real leads that was created three, four, five years ago for companies. So once you push it out there, you can just never know when it might take off for you. So you can be successful with content marketing if you develop your strategy, put together that editorial or that content marketing calendar, create unique, engaging content and then promote and distribute that content. And then lastly, and I didn't really cover it in any slide, 
but you do need to measure the results. If you can measure all the way through to the conversion, you'll know what content ended up turning into a product or a service sale for you if you measure it all the way through to the conversion. And of course, you'll want to repeat what's working and change what isn't working. So all step, eight steps matter. And my last couple of slides here. So if you want to be awesome at content marketing, uh, it requires a whole different kind of an expertise, in my opinion. And I think what you need to do is try to go to some of the conferences. There was just a wonderful com conference in Columbus, Ohio, called Content Marketing World. There's other conferences throughout the year dedicated to content marketing. You can read the books that are out. There's some really, really good ones uh, dedicated to content marketing. And there's certainly some really good blogs out there dedicated to content marketing. And I would follow those blogs, subscribe to their feeds, uh, learn from some of those experts. And remember, every brand has a story to tell. I don't care who it is. Every brand has a story to tell. And those who tell it best are going to win. So I told you to get a free copy of Accelerate. And here's how you do it. If you tweet out, Content Marketing Book at Accelerate Book is free on Amazon Kindle today only. Well, you don't have to tweet it to get it for free. All you have to do is go to Amazon, uh, search for the book uh, Accelerate. You might have to put Accelerate in my in Arnie. I don't know if it will come up first or not. Or Accelerate in Content Marketing. I'm sure it will come up. And up until midnight tonight, uh, anybody who can uh, wants can have the Kindle version for free. Just download it directly from Amazon. Zero price. I hear you all cheering. Anyway, we're Vertical Measures. We help clients get more traffic, more leads, more business. That's how to reach us. And I think I turn it over to Quinn now. Thank you, Arnie. And thanks for all the great information. I encourage you all to go ahead and get Arnie's book, Accelerate. I read it, and it's great. It will give you a more in-depth analysis of everything he's covered today. So definitely go ahead and over to Amazon and get that. So we're going to take a few questions. Um, if you have any you haven't asked yet, go ahead and shoot us a note on the applet, the chat, or the question applet, and we'll get those answered. So the first one, Arnie, is I'm hoping I'm not butchering this name from Geraint Holloman, and he says I'm very interested in your view as to what are the distinguishing characteristics of genuinely great, remarkable, or awesome content. Do you have any checklists? Uh, that's really good. Well, um, I think, well, actually, you know, I'll tell you what, I, I was going to answer it differently. Um, SEO Moz did a study of their own blog posts, and if you're familiar with S SEO Moz, they publish uh, multiple blog posts per day, and they've been doing it for years, so they had a really good case study. What they discovered was the most linked to content. And, and the reason I'm saying linked to is that would imply people liked it well enough to share it you know, with their website visitors. The most linked to content, and you're probably not going to like this answer, um, included video, the content itself included a video and an image and was more than 1,600 words long. Um, so what I think that implies is that you know, when people are actually really, really looking for some needy information on a subject, they're willing to read and look at a, a long blog post. Um, and that, so anyway, that's what tends to become the most engaging, most shared, uh, most popular kind of content, unfortunately. And the reason I say unfortunately is because it takes a serious effort, and, and, and I, I understand time is a, of a premium. Um, so generally, it's the longer, meatier kind of content, 1,600 words or longer. Great. Thanks, Arnie. Our next question is, how do you recommend delegating the duties of implementing a content marketing plan? Well, that's, that's a tough question because that, that, you know, that would uh, depend on everybody's different environment. You know, if you're a Fortune 500 company, you're going to have a whole lot of a different set of resources than, say, vertical measures where we've got 20 employees. Um, but we, we do divide up the tasks. Uh, in fact, Quinn uh, is in charge of our blog, and so she um, you know, she lays out our calendar, and, and at that time, you know, when we're laying out the 90-day detail, we're assigning uh, people with their, their uh, uh, blog category and their blog post, and you know, we let them create whatever they want, but we're, we're giving them the assignments well ahead of time. Um, it, you, know, you know, there's so many different tasks that can be involved, it's, it's pretty hard to answer just in a straight-up question. Uh, 
but generally, I would say it generally falls on the marketing team. You're going to need to involve, hopefully, if you have separate teams uh, for SEO, you'll, you'll want to make sure that the SEO and the IT team are there and ready to post different kinds of content. Like if it's an infographic or a video, that's going to take some different resources to probably get that live online on your site, so you're going to want to work with them. Uh, but it, it, I think it's a little bit too hard for me to answer you know, verbally in, in, in 30 seconds on how to structure the organization. It's all a little bit different. Another question is from Emily Miller. She asks, how do you find the PR and bloggers that are relevant to your business in order to pitch your content to? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, and I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to rattle them off. Um, I don't know if you're also already in the PR business, uh, but you would do it very, very similarly using similar tools. One of the things you can do is just use Google um, and, and, and uh, conduct those kinds of searches. We use a tool here called Vocus, uh, which is a, uh, you know, we pay for it on a monthly basis that allows us to tap into all these journalists, uh, and it's all categorized by whether or not they're, uh, you know, in sports or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, retail or, or whatever it might be, whatever, whatever they're covering. Um, I think what we might want to do is answer your question. I can, we can get you some links to some other tools, and I think we're going to have to answer that question maybe in a blog post or in an email out to everybody. Great, thanks. I think we have time for one more quick question, and this is from Twitter, from Andrew Webb, and he asks, how long should content marketing videos be in length? Yeah, another, uh, every, every one of my answers starts with, it depends. Um, I, I think the general rule of thumb is two to three minutes. Uh, what I do know is that people uh, make up their mind to continue watching a video in the first eight seconds. Um, so you need to, whatever you're going to do, you need to hook them right away. Um, you know, there have been uh, some very successful videos that have been 30, 40, 60 minutes long that have gone viral. Um, but most content marketing videos, you know, especially if you're going to maybe focus on the how-to genre of, of videos, uh, which I think is a really great category, <coughs> um, generally we try to hold ours under three minutes. I've had some go five, six, seven minutes. Um, but uh, that, that's the kind of range I think that you want to be thinking. Great. Thanks, Arnie. I think that's all the time we have for questions today, but thanks for all your expertise. I know you can probably go on for a couple hours or days on this, so thank you for <laughs> filling us in on the things we can start to do to plan our strategy. Also, thank you to all of you for coming and joining the Vertical Measures team today. Please mark your calendar for our next webinar. It's Thursday, October 11th, where our very own Client Services Manager and Vice President, Mike Huber, will be speaking on pitfalls to avoid in a post-Penguin and Panda world.